Hey, welcome to Case of the Week number three, Large Bowel Lymphoma. I'm Dr. Dan Koval. Let's look at the images. So we're starting with a coronal CT abdomen and pelvis with intravenous and oral contrast. And you can see that there's this irregular spiculated mass here in the region of the ascending colon. As we scroll along, we see the ileocecal valve coming in here. And then we also appreciate this lobular polypoid wall thickening in the involved segment. And notice also the segment of involvement is quite long. It's longer than we'd typically expect for adenocarcinoma. We also have some nonspecific mesenteric lymphadenopathy here in the right lower quadrant. Scrolling along, here we now reach the sagittal reformatted images. Check out that polypoid wall thickening, and notice how it's also isodense to the adjacent skeletal muscle. That's another key feature for lymphoma. Here we see another feature that we sometimes see with lymphoma is how the bowel is aneurysmally dilated, or pseudoaneurysmally. And also, contrast passes through this region without obstruction. We see again that mesenteric lymphadenopathy there. Axial images here showing the same thing, the mesenteric lymphadenopathy this irregular polypoid circumferential wall thickening, and then the aneurysmal dilatation of the involved colon. And again, notice how it's very long segment, but uh, non-obstructing. Contrast passes through this area. And this patient then subsequently had a F18 FGG PET CT, and as expected, the tumor is markedly FGG avid as lymphoma typically is, particularly large B-cell lymphoma. And notice how there's circumferential avidity there, very marked compared to the adjacent bowel. This coronal image series shows the adjacent uh, bowel much less avid than the involved segment. Now, why is it important to differentiate large bowel lymphoma from colonic adenocarcinoma? Well, adenocarcinoma is typically treated surgically, whereas lymphoma is extremely chemoresponsive. And as you can see here, this is the same patient three months after chemotherapy, there's marked reduction in tumor. All right, let's look at a few key points for large bowel lymphoma. So as I mentioned, it tends to be isodense to skeletal muscle, and that's a good rule for abdominal pelvic lymphoma in general, whether it's involving the kidneys, liver, bowel, it tends to be isodense to skeletal muscle. There are times where it's heterogeneous, but that's less common. So this growth pattern of aneurysmal dilatation of bowel, whether it's small or large bowel, is fairly characteristic of lymphoma. Interestingly, it's less likely obstructive compared to other tumors, whether it's involving the colon or renal collecting system. And it also tends to involve a longer segment compared to colonic adenocarcinoma, which tends to be a bit more focal. When it involves the colon, it's often located near the ileocecal valve. But interestingly, extranodal GI lymphoma is more common in the stomach and then the small bowel. When it involves small bowel, the ileum is most commonly involved, followed by jejunum and then duodenum. And then colorectal is actually the least common site. So you can remember, though, that it tends to involve the ileocecal region because the ileum is the most common site of small bowel involvement. Splenomegaly and severe lymphadenopathy, if present, will favor lymphoma, but isn't always there, as in this case, we didn't have any splenomegaly and the lymphadenopathy we had was mild and nonspecific. All right, thanks for watching Case of the Week, Large Bowel Lymphoma. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our podcast, YouTube channel, or by following us on social media. Until next time, radiology is life.